everybody. It's Christina and Perseus in a box. And I am here with another load of books. I actually sort of hit the jackpot of review copies this week since I got a shipment from Y Book Central, which always kind of puts me over the top uh, because they work with a lot of publishers that don't necessarily send to me. So I get this whole new world of books. Percy, you're being so cute sniffing my books. I'm kind of in the way. That is that better? We'll call that better. Got to make sure you can see the cat since obviously he's the cute one. So first, I got two books from Matt Kids. Uh, the first of which is My Last Kiss by Bethany Neal. What if your last kiss was with the wrong boy? I mean, currently my life problem is more like lack of boys and lack of kisses, but you know, I can see where if you're going to go out, like you don't want to go out after you had a bad dinner. So you certainly don't want to die after you had a kiss with the wrong person. Maybe there was a lot of saliva and it was uncomfortable. Maybe they bit you. You know, like there are ways that that could be really terrible. Anyways, it's apparently like an afterlifey kind of thing and it sounds really like it could be interesting. So then the second one from Matt Kids is The Truth About Alice by Jennifer Matthew or however she happens to pronounce that. And this one, let's see. Wow. Uh, so the back says, Alice did it with my grandpa. And she liked it. Alice Franklin equals whore. Flush if you done Alice. Which I'm guessing is written on a bathroom stall, which is awesome. But it's about slut shaming and lots of painful stuff. And I am was really scared of this one. But Becca, a pretty, well, nope. She is of great imagination. Nay, pretty deadly review. Uh, everyone's been moving on me lately, which is totally good. I'm all for it. It's just hard to remember to say the right blog name. Anyway, she just read this and gave it five stars. So I'm pretty excited, even though Becca and I don't always agree on things. I feel like that means it's pretty safe that this is going to send a healthy message that I will approve of, even if it's not like my writing style or whatever. <clears throat> and then starting the YA books central shipment. First of all, I have a Harper Perennial adult title, which I guess they're, I thought it was adult, but maybe they're pushing it as a crossover. Reconstructing Amelia by Kimberly McCrate. I believe this is a mystery thriller. Yeah, because it says if you liked Gone Girl. Uh, that's not usually my thing, but this one's been getting a lot of buzz, and I think someone actually even recommended it to me, so I wanted to try it. Got to, you know, sometimes I have to push the boundaries and read the things that kind of intimidate me. Then the next one is a Simon and Schuster book, The Counterfeit Family Tree of V. Crawford Wong, which I will admit I was attracted to solely because it's got Asian characters. I'm all about diversity, and I especially love most things Asian. So I had to find out what that was about. And then a, another Harper title, William Morrow, for play by Sophie Jordan. This is a new adult book. I really hated her YA Firelight, but I heard that the new adult is good. It may just be that she's one of those authors who should really only write contemporary because they don't, not even that she can't necessarily do world building. Maybe she can, I don't know, but I don't think she cares. Like, I think she's in it for the romance. And then at that point, if you're writing genre fiction, like Dragon Shifters, and you only care about the romance, it's not going to turn out well. You need to be like Rachel Hartman and really care about the world that you're building. And then I'm reading this one right now, Enders by Lissa Price. This one is a random house title. It is all of these so far are out already. Uh, and this is the sequel to Starters. And this cover is awful. I mean, it's just as awful in person. She looks like, I don't know if she looks like she was beat up or if she's a clown, but it's terrible. I was really hoping they would fix it before it actually came out. It was just so bad. I don't even, I don't even understand. But it is, it's good. I like it. It's not catching me the way that starters did, but I think also I was just, you know, at a different point in my reading life when I read Starters. It's still good, though. I'm not, like, disappointed that I'm finishing the series or anything. Uh, the next is The True Adventures of Niccolo Zen 
by Nicholas Christopher. And this is another random house title, which is why I had never ever heard of it until it showed up to request from the Y Book Central Hall, since they don't like to promote their books. But I don't know much about it, but it's about uh, music and it's historical fiction. It sounded potentially interesting. And uh, this is the first of the YABC books that I tried to read. It comes out next Tuesday. And can we please break out the sad trombones? Because womp womp. Red Rising by Pierce Brown, which had up to a couple of days ago got nothing but four and five star reviews from even the most particular of bloggers, was a big fail for me. It was a big, big fail. So I am the black sheep once again. In fact, I disliked this book so much. I mean, I don't think I've ever been in physical pain because of a book before, but this book gave me a headache, which I would have dismissed, except for the fact that it also gave Bonnie a headache. She read it at the same time, thank goodness, because it, I was having trouble deciding to DNF, and Bonnie having the same experience was pretty helpful. Sorry that you suffered through an extra 10%, Bonnie. I DNF'd at 30% with a headache, and... I struggled to read for the next like 24 hours because it so made me not want to read anymore. Uh, I think it'll work for fans of books like Dune, but it's just I'm very character driven and the main character is incredibly boring. The pace was very slow. The world building is kind of a mess of lots and lots of things that are happening all together and maybe it would have been better if it were a little simpler. I don't know. Anyways, it totally didn't work for me. Still might be your thing, but just wow no for me in Red Rising. It was not meant to be Pierce Brown. I'm sorry. I tried. Maybe One Day by Melissa Cantor. I'm a little worried about this one now. I'd requested it before anyone I knew had reviewed it, but Jenny has since read this and found that she didn't think that the portrayal of cancer was realistic and I'm kind of concerned about that. I mean I know she mentioned that you know they find out and then get signed up for actual treatment within like two days or something which come on doctors like you're lucky if you show for your appointment and get in within two days let's be honest. But I'm going to try to go into it with an open mind so maybe even though that's not so good. I'll still love the characters or something. Why? Why is the light flickering like that? Whoa. Sorry, I'm playing with settings, and that was obviously a bad choice. Uh, I can't do anything about that. <laughs> so next is Panic by Lauren Oliver. Uh, this one is an extraordinary novel of fear, friendship, and courage. It's hard because reading the whole blurb would take a long time, but then a lot of the little tiny blurbs don't really say anything. Anyways, April already read this and she loved it, so I will probably enjoy it as well because, like, I've learned with April that if she rates a book three stars on Goodreads that I'm probably going to be like, eh, no, I can probably pass on that one and it'll be fine. But if she rates it four or five stars, odds are fairly high that I'm going to like it. There are a few times where that doesn't work, but it does almost all the time. Uh, next is Ask Again Later by Liz. Read her last name for yourself. CZ UK. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce CZ. I apologize. And this one, Sliding Doors Meet 16 Candles, and this irresistibly romantic debut. I am all about that. And again, April read that one when she first got it, uh, I don't know, a month or two ago, and she really liked it, so I am on board. I wouldn't have requested it without April's very early review, which is why I think early reviews by bloggers are a good thing, because then it gets more bloggers to read the arc they might have set aside. Which is why I don't understand the hatred of early reviews. Anyway, Side Effects May Vary by Julie Murphy. I'm a little bit afraid of this one because it sounded like it was going to be really good, but now it's getting some mad reviews. And now I have two, I have two cancer books. That's sort of, how did that happen? Anyway, obviously because you requested two cancer books, idiot. Uh, but, you know, whatever. Hopefully I like it. The cover is very cute. And the final one I got from Y Book Central is The Interrogation of a Shallow Wolf by Ambulin Quimelina. 
I'm sure that was butchered and I apologize. Uh, this one is Australian and I think it maybe has been out for a little while already in Australia, but Candlewick is publishing it in April. The early Goodreads reviews look really encouraging. So I'm excited. We need, the U.S. really needs to buy like all of the Australian books because I'm always hearing people talk about them. They get them through mystical portals of space and time. And then they're like, this book is amazing. And then I look online and I can't like have this book. Like I know there are Melina Marchetta books that are like almost impossible to get in the States. And this upsets me. I think it was Melina Marchetta or maybe it was Kath Crowley. Anyway, there are some of those Australian authors who have books that are only in Australia. And I want them all. And then I also got from St. Martin's Lost Lake by Sarah Addison Allen. And I am so excited and I'm going to read this soon. I'm doing a buddy read with Ellis. I have to wait a little bit to start it. So you better hurry up, Ellis, because I want to read this magical realism cuteness. I need it in my life because it is everything that is good and happy and adorable in the world. Or at least I assume this one will be like the others. And that was certainly true about them. And my final book, I don't really enter giveaways anymore, but I happen to enter a tw Twitter giveaway. I do that sometimes when I see them. And I won Postage 3 by Nick Lake from Bloomsbury. And I have been curious about Nick Lake uh, because he won the Prince Award. So I'll be curious to see what this is like. It looks very different from his previous novel, In Darkness, which I would also like to check out at some point. So that is my super awesome haul and some ranting, and I hope you have enjoyed this production. I'm sorry Perseus did not deign to stay on camera for very long, but you know how it is with herding cats and all. Bye everybody!